Voice of the Sea, learning from experts across the ocean. Welcome to Voice of the Sea. This time on Voice of the Sea. So after, after they come from the hatchery, we put them, we call these our nursery tanks. As you can see, basically as they grow, they just get moved into larger and larger tanks. Uh-huh. Um, let's see. And these are made out of concrete? Uh, yes, these are concrete tanks. We have, uh, we stock 4,000 fish per big tank. Wow. So they'll be grown to between one to one and a half pounds. So we'll, we'll have between four and 5,000 pounds of fish in these tanks when, it's, when they're ready for market size. And how many of the large tanks? Um, we have five. Uh, right now we're only utilizing th three. Uh, we may expand to the other two. I know these are the nursery or the uh, inner tubes here for the fish to play with or? Uh, it's in case you fall on them. At one point we had a tarp over the tank uh -huh. just to cover it. And that kept the tarp from falling in the middle of the tank. Uh, right now it's supporting the airlines. No. No real purpose anymore, actually. <laughs> we should probably take it out. Um, at some point, we're going to have this this whole area will be covered um, with a shade. Do they pick on each other at all? Um, no. That's the other, tilapia are really good about that, too. Um, the other thing you avoid when you have a high stocking density is that territorial thing I was talking about uh -huh. in the hatchery. When, they're, when there's a lot of fish packed together, they don't really, you don't get that aggression. Mostly because they can't, they can't really have a territory. <laughs> the calcium and potassium we add um, in the form of calcium hydroxide, which is a base, and potassium hydroxide. Uh, and we kind of kill two birds with one stone. Um, the pH in these systems likes to drop, so once we get low pH, we constantly we have to add base every day. Uh -huh. So by adding calcium hydroxide, it brings the pH back up and adds calcium and vice versa with the potassium. So what we do is we alternate calcium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide every day. So it keeps our levels in the system up and the pH stable. And then iron, we have a chelated iron that we purchase from the BEI company, agricultural company here in Hawaii. And uh, we have to add that every other week. Um, other than that, all the all the nutrients are supplied by the. And is uh, that specific for you guys are growing mostly lettuce? Is that the lettuce right now, needs? They've got some um, other things living in with them too. Um, we get these little red, which I think every aquaponic system I have I've uh -huh. seen has these little red uh, worms. Mm -hmm. Are those they're, helpful? I'm not sure if they're helpful, but they're not harmful. <laughs> um, but I, I've seen every one I've seen. I, there, there's a lot of them around. One of the things I heard is you can tell the health of the the plants by the color of the roots. Is right. that correct? If you have, uh, if there's not enough oxygen in the water, you have dead zones, or the plant's not getting in the right nutrients, the roots will be brown, and they'll be short. Mm -hmm. uh, root rot. You can actually see them rotting. Um, we actually had a little bit of problem with that when we first got started. Uh, we didn't have our aeration hooked up yet. We aerate this trough. Every four feet, there's an air stone. So there's aeration under the troughs, under these mats. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't have that, um, you have a problem with root rot. As you can see, our land here is not level. Right. So we had to terrace it. So it just drains from that trough into this one and then until it goes all the way down the hill. And we have a sump. Um, at the bottom of the hill, just that all the water collects in and then it gets pumped back up to the fish. It starts all over again. That one small hole. Oh, well, there he is. So, they do really well. Um, basil does really, any, any leafy green does really well. This is just standard basil, um, sweet basil. 
trying watermelon. Oh. So we'll check the pH of the water, um, the temperature of the water, and the dissolved oxygen level. There's just another little electronic pH tester. It has a probe on the end. Um, so this is comparable to, say, those little aquarium test kits that you might get at the fish store, but... Just a little more accurate. A little more accurate. Right. Okay. And easier. Just <laughs> one step. So basically, you wait for this reading to stabilize, and you know our pH here usually runs around 6.7. So it stopped at 6.7. Well, 6.6, .6, sorry. So our pH in this tank is 6.6. .6, so we'll record that. And what um, does that mean? Well, water pH of seven is neutral. So anything less than seven is more acidic, anything more is basic. Uh huh. Um, tilapia, again, very hardy fish that can live in a wide range, but um, we try to keep it close to seven, close to neutral. So a pH of 6.6, .6, we're doing is, pretty good. It's good. Okay. That also means your pH will drop um, if your carbon dioxide levels in your water are rising. It makes it makes the water more acidic, uh -huh. which happens when you have a lot of fish. But um, our aeration blows, degasses the CO2 out of the water. So that's another way. If all of a sudden our pH is really low, then we might need to check that the aeration is working properly. The University of Hawaii Sea Grant College program focused on Hawaii's coasts and its communities through sustainable development, safe seafood supply, sustainable coastal tourism, hazard resilience, and healthy coastal ecosystems. Hawaii Sea Grant the Curriculum Research and Development Group in the College of Education at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. CRDG has been providing quality educational programs and services for over 40 years, serving students, teachers, parents, educators, and experts around the world and here in Hawaii. The Curriculum Research and Development Group, improving schools, improving education. CRDG, Exploring Our Fluid Earth is a dynamic curriculum developed by the University of Hawaii's Curriculum Research and Development Group. Teaching ocean science concepts through the disciplines of physics, chemistry, biology, and ecology. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is now available freely online. Find out more at exploringourfluidearth.org. Turn your love of the ocean into a lifelong career. Join NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, as we unlock the secrets in the deep oceans, track rapidly moving storms, model climate trends, protect and preserve our marine resources, and so much more. It's all in a day's work at NOAA. Find a career that makes a world of difference, enriching life through science, service, and stewardship. NOAA.